Now, imagine a football team that has never won a match, has scored just two goals in 17 years and become a laughing stock for its world record 31-0 thrashing at the hands of Australia. That was American Samoa just a few years ago. The team's underachievement would have sent most coaches running. But Dutch coach Thomas Rongen took up the challenge of trying to help the tiny Pacific island climb from the bottom of the world rankings. That's the subject of the new documentary, Next Goal Wins, and the star of the film is Jaya Sailua, the world's first transgender footballer. She's one of Samoa's Fafa Finge boys who were raised as girls and are seen as an integral part of the traditional culture. I'll be speaking to her in just a moment, but first let's take a look at a clip from the film. Off the field, people see me, you know, I walk feminine, I do feminine things. Even when I walk onto the field, I wave to the crowd and, you know, all this diva stuff. But then, as soon as the whistle blows, like, I turn all of that off and I try to prove to the people that I can play, you know, and I'm not just seen as a joke at, on the team. I'm just a soccer player, even though I run like a girl on the field. I'm not a male or a female, I'm a soccer player. Well, joining me live now from Phoenix, Arizona, is Jaya. Jaya, thanks very much for joining us here on Impact. When you uh, became the world's first transgender football player, did you realise what a big deal that was? No, at first I didn't. Um, James Montague uh, had interviewed me afterwards, immediately afterwards, and he asked me the same question, how it felt to be the first transgender in the world. And um, that took me by surprise because I, was, I wasn't aware that in the world other trans people don't have the opportunity to play the, the, the sport and don't have the equal opportunity to represent their country. I mean, did you ever experience any discrimination on or off the field? Um, minor, minor moments on the field when, uh, from the opposing team, um, the Cook Islands and Tonga. Um, making me feel like I was a target only because um, soccer is a mental sport also and um, it's easy to target people who are different and um, I guess they felt that it might affect my um, my performance on the field but it only made me play worse um, play play tougher <laughs> what about from your own team um, they're hundred percent supportive um, the boys always make me feel like I'm a part of them. Off the field, um, they sort of protect me. They see me as a sister figure. And, um, but we're on the field, I've become an equal player to them. 100% um, support and um, zero discrimination. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about the Fafa Finge, because as you can imagine, for our audience, it would be, you know, something quite strange for someone to be deliberately raised as, as the opposite sex. Okay, um, I understand that because I've, I've done a lot of research and um, in other countries it's different, but in American Samoa, the culture enables the Fafa Finge, which translates into way of the woman or womanly. Um, it enables us to live out our lives in a way that we are able to become very successful in life, um, become comfortable in our own skin. Um, like I said many times in other interviews, the foundation of the culture is respect. And um, that includes respect for the Fafafine community. And not only transgendered people, but anyone who feels different. Say, if Palangis were to come in, to American Samoa to visit, we would show them hospitality and respect, the same that we would show our elders. Or okay, thanks.